Welcome to Learning PLC Programming with the Click PLC lesson number two. Up to this point, we have gone to the Automation Direct website. We've downloaded the software, loaded it on the computer, opened it up to make sure it works. Next thing we need to do is download it into a PLC. But before we download it into the PLC, we have to make some electrical connections to power it up. As I said before, I'll be using the Click, one of the Click PLC um, power supplies to put out the plus 24 volt to supply the Click processor. So before I start wiring anything, I like to at least have a sketch, if not a full drawing. So to begin with, let's, let's make a drawing. Since we'll be connecting in from a, an extension cord type connection directly to a wall socket, I'm going to make a little symbol like this. To represent the electrical plug come off this way now we have to have our power supply here this will be the line connection this will be the neutral and this will be the ground then coming off of it we will have zero volts zero volts and uh, 24 volts and we also will have our PLC. And on the PLC, on the bottom side of the PLC, which is uh, right here, you can see, I don't know if you can see it very well, it says uh, 24 volts, 0 volts, and G for ground for the connections here. So we have four connections. We'll do the top one will be 24. The next one will be 0 volts. The next one will be a blank. The bottom one will be a ground connection. So therefore, I'll just represent those three right here. This one will be the 24, this one will be the zero, and this one will be the ground. So we're going to come in here with our hot wire, our black wire from the extension cord, the neutral wire, and the ground wire to here. That will be the three connections here, the line and the neutral and the ground. Then we'll also make a connection from 24 volts on the power supply to 24 volt connection on the PLC. The zero volt connections will be connected. And then for the ground, we'll come right off the same ground connection over here, back over to this ground here. Now this is just a simple little sketch by hand, but what it does, it shows every wire that we'll be connecting to be able to power this up. I would really like to do it with a better drawing. This drawing will be a much better representation of what we're wanting to connect. Here we still see the, uh, the connection from the, uh, to the wall outlet. Then we're coming off of our extension cord or our power cord with a black wire connecting to our line, our white wire connecting to the neutral, the green wire connecting to the ground connection, which also comes back around and connects to the ground connection on the PLC. Then we have our plus 24 coming over and connecting to the PLC and the zero volts coming over and connecting to the PLC. Now on this one you'll notice that the wire colors are marked. This is the black wire, white wire, and green wire. And this one is the blue wire for the, anything that's 24 volts. White wire with a blue stripe, that's for anything that's part of the 24 volt supply that's zero volts. And then the green wire is always going to be ground. We'll start with this drawing and then as our project progresses and we add more items onto it, we'll change to a more professional style of drawing. Now the wiring connections are made. That's all we need is just like we showed in the drawing. We have the black wire, the white wire, and the green wire connected. 
We have the green wire also coming back around to the PLC connector. We have the white wire with a blue stripe for the zero volts. And we have the solid blue wire coming around to the 24. Now you'll notice I put a label on the 24 volt. The reason is there could be several wires that are the same color blue and they could be going to different places and might not be the same thing as the plus 24. They may be signal wires, they may be wires uh, going to a lamp, <clears throat> but the zero volts on the DC will always be white with a blue stripe and really there's no need for a marker for it because it will not change. Now the wiring is complete. All the wiring connections look good. We have the safety cover on, the finger proof. Um, everything looks good. It looks like we're ready to turn the power on. I'll plug it in the wall. Turn the power on. Immediately you see the power light turn on on the PLC. I'll turn it to the run position. Okay, we have a program that's working in there now. You see it's the run light has turned on. Before, when I had it turned off, the run light was off. Turn it on. Now the run light is on. There is no error light, but you can see we have two LEDs turning on and off here. They are for Y1 and Y2. They are outputs. So there must be a program in here with the timers to turn to blink some lights, for example. Maybe this was used for some training before. I don't know. We just pulled it off the shelf. So now I guess it's time to see if we can connect the computer to it software and let's see if they'll talk. I'll turn it back off. Plug in the RJ12 connector here. The other end is hooked up to the computer and so now we are ready to start the software and communicate. So now I'll open up the Click software and we'll start a new project. This PLC is a, an O2DRD. So we'll go down O2DRD. There it is. The picture is the same. I'm going to click OK. Take it to a full screen. <clears throat> now I'm going to go into the function on the left hand side. I'm going to go to System Configuration. There you can see the PLC. The picture is exactly the same as what we have just wired up. Here it shows the PLC. It gives the part number and then it gives the addresses for the fixed inputs X1 through X4. It gives the addresses for the fixed outputs Y1 through Y4. It gives the uh, addresses for the um, data coming in from the analog input, uh, DF1, DF2, and also that that would be going out for the analog output, DF3 and DF4. We don't have the power supply showing here, so I'll co connect or select the power supply. Like we said before, there are only two types. We are using the half amp one, which is 500 milliamps, so I will click OK. Now you can see here, <clears throat> it's showing uh, plus 500, and then we're losing minus 140 milliamps to power up the CPU. If we had more inputs and output cards in the next slots, you would see that value you know, increasing as it takes off more and more of the power supply. Right now we have a half amp available, so I don't think we'll have any problem with the training part that we're doing now. I will click on OK. Now, every program must have an end statement. So the CPU will go through with safety checks. It will read the inputs. Then it will process the program rung by rung by rung until it gets to the end statement. When it gets to the end statement, then it will update the outputs. Then it starts back over with a new cycle. So for this, I'll go over to the right-hand side and I'll move down to the end statement. Uh, first, I need to click. I want the end statement to go here. That's the first rung. We're not going to put anything else in there. We just want to make sure we have something that it recognizes as a program. Because if we don't, it'll come back and 
say that we've got an error, a synap uh, syntax uh, programming error, and we have to correct it before we can communicate with the PLC. Here's the end statement down here on the right. Double tap. That's in there now. Now then, I will save this as project one. How's that? Yes. <clears throat> now then, we need to make communications to the PLC itself. I click on the PLC at the top and I want to choose connect. My cable is already connected and I have power on the PLC. And it's asking me, do I want to connect in on COM5? I'm going to click the detail. Clicking the detail, you can see that's the only USB port I have connected to anything. So I'll say OK. And here, everything else is the defaults for the software. So I'm going to collect, uh, excuse me, I will tap on connect. It says read project from the PLC or don't read project from the PLC. I don't want to read the project from the PLC at this time. I just want to connect. <clears throat> now then, I have a project that we've just done that only has one rung in it, and it has the end statement on it. I want to download that or transfer that from the computer to the PC PLC. So I'll click on PLC at the top, and I'll go down to Write Project into PLC. Here it came through and it compiled and it said new project one, zero errors, zero warnings. And now this shows me what I'm trying to download here. This shows me what's being actually used in the PLC. You can see all the purple, all the purple is unused programming space, unused memory. So I will click on OK. And it says the firmware in the Click PLC is older than the version that's in the Click software, uh, this software supports. Please update the firmware to version 2.6. Well, let's do the update. This doesn't take but a few minutes. Here, this tells you <clears throat> uh, what uh, you're transferring or what you're updating to. This tells you what's currently in the PLC. You can see this is version 2.4 in the PLC. So I'm going to click on Update. Do I want to make a backup of what's in the program of the PLC first? No, I don't. I just want to install the new firmware without making a backup copy. <clears throat> Do you want to update? This is just another verification to make sure you don't hit the wrong button. Yes, I want to do the update. The update is not very long. It's much faster than what I've seen in some of the Allen Bradley and Siemens uh, PLCs. It takes maybe a minute or so. We'll speed this up. Okay, it's about finished now. Firmware was updating successful from version 2.4 to version 2.6. <clears throat> Close. Now I'm back to this screen, which was the transfer screen I wanted to go to to begin with. I'll click OK. This is writing our new project into the PLC, which, like we said, only has this end statement on it. Transfer is complete. Now, I, the switch was in the stop position. I just changed the switch to the run position. And now this is green. It tells me that the PLC is, is running. I can go to monitor, status monitor, and it will show me. You see, the end turned blue. That means it's being active activated every time it goes through the cycle. So we've established our, our communication connection.
Now that we're connected, the next video we will begin to program. Perhaps we'll program a red light. Thank you very much.